In this video, I'm going to go through, through some of the basics of calorimetry for exothermic and endothermic reactions. I'm going to show you what a simple calorimeter looks like and how it works. I'm going to go through some of the simple, some through some of the calculations and the general ideas, and then we're going to try and do a couple um, examples if we have time. Okay, so here we go. We have calorimetry. It's a process used to measure the change in heat, or really the heat released or absorbed by a chemical reaction. This is my calorimeter. It's a very simple device. It has a beaker on the bottom, so it won't tip over when I put it down. And it has two styrofoam cups. This is called a coffee cup calorimeter because it's simply made from styrofoam cups. We give it a little insulation. I have two cups in the bottom, one for a lid, and I have a thermometer to measure the change in temperature of the water that goes in the calorimeter. So we put water in the calorimeter. Then we're going to do the reaction in the water. We measure the change in temperature of the water, and we know if the temperature goes up or down that the reaction must have gained or lost energy. If the temperature goes up, then energy must have come from the reaction into the water. That would be a reaction that releases energy. That would be exothermic. If the temperature of the water goes down, then the reaction must have um, absorbed energy from the water, and that would be an endothermic reaction. Okay, so the general idea is any energy that is gained or lost by the reaction, gained or released by the reaction, will go into the water. We can measure the change in temperature of the water. We can calculate the change in energy, and the change in energy of the water will be equal to, but opposite in sign, to the energy that was gained or released by the reaction. Okay? So that's our calorimeter, and that's basically how we use it. All right, so, as I said, the general idea is this, that any change in energy, delta Q, for the water, which we can calculate, will be equal to opposite in sign, but equal in magnitude to the change in energy of the reaction. We can't really calculate the change in energy of the reaction, but we know that those two will be equal to each other. And the equation that we use is delta Q, and again it's delta Q for the water, is going to be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat of the water times the change in temperature of the water. Now C is the specific heat, and the specific heat for water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. Specific heat for water is a constant. Every substance has its own specific heat. It's basically a measure of how much energy it takes to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. And for water, it's 4.184 joules to raise one gram of water, one degree Celsius. But for water, it's a constant, but every substance has its own specific heat. All right, now let's go through and see if we can do a couple of examples. Here we have a piece of magnesium, one and a half grams of magnesium, is reacted with 35 milliliters of hydrochloric acid solution, which is basically water with a little bit of hydrochloric acid in it. So we assume it's 35 milliliters of water. The initial temperature is 21.5. After the reaction is complete, it's 25.7, so the temperature has gone up. So you should be already thinking, well, is that exothermic or endothermic? And then we want to know, is it exothermic or endothermic? And we're going to figure that out by calculating the change in heat of the reaction. All right, so let's go through and do the calculations. First of all, we're going to calculate the change in energy of the water. So we do that, delta Q. We're going to write the equation down, M times C times the change in temperature. Okay, so first thing we have to do is we have to calculate the change in temperature. Well, the change in temperature is always going to be equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, you always have to do final minus initial, not initial minus final, or simply the, the, the difference of the two, because you have to do final, final minus initial so that you get the sign correct. So it's 25 0.7 degrees Celsius minus 21.5, and that is equal to 4.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, now we can calculate the change in energy of the water. The change in energy, and again, this is for the water, 
is equal to the mass of the water. And as I said, it's 35 milliliters of water, so it's 35 grams. One milliliter is one gram. The specific heat is 4.184, and it's joules, grams, degrees Celsius, and the change in temperature we said was 4.2. Degrees Celsius. So you will see the Celsius cancels with this Celsius, this gram cancels with this gram, and we're left with joules. And the amount of the amount of energy that the water gained, I'm just going to put a plus sign here, is 615 joules. Well, where did all that energy come from? That energy came from the reaction. So we know if the water gained 615 joules, then the reaction must have lost that same amount of energy, 615 joules. So you can see, as I said before, these are equal in magnitude but opposite in sign. A reaction, by definition, that loses energy, where energy comes out of the reaction, is called exothermic. All right. So I think that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so that's an exothermic reaction because it lost energy. And if it says here, justify your answer, you could put because the delta Q of the reaction was negative. All right, so let's go through and try one more. Okay, in this case, we have uh, ammonium nitrate. We have a styrofoam calorimeter. We have 13.45 grams. We're going to put that in 25 milliliters of water, and we have an initial temperature of the water of 20.9, a final temperature of 2.1. The temperature went down, and we want to know the change in heat, and we also want to know um, whether or not that was an exothermic or endothermic reaction. So let's write down our equation again. Delta Q. Once again, this is delta Q for the water. is M times C times Delta T. Delta T is going to be final minus initial temperature. So delta T, the final temperature was 2.1. And the initial temperature was 20.9. So it's minus 20.9. And that is equal to minus 188 degrees Celsius. Okay, so it's important we have this minus sign. We want to make sure we carry that minus sign with us. And therefore, we know that the mass of the water is 25 grams. The specific heat of water is still 4.184. And the units are joules per gram degrees Celsius times the change in temperature. Remember, it's minus 18 0.8 degrees Celsius, our Celsius is cancel, our grams cancel, and we know that the water, this is the change in energy for the water, is going to be equal to minus 1966 joules. So that means that when we put the ammonium nitrate in the water, it absorbed this much water, the, excuse me, it absorbed this much energy because the water lost that much energy. Therefore, the change in energy for the reaction must be, I'm just going to put a plus sign here for emphasis, 1,966 joules. And therefore, we can see that the change in energy for the reaction is positive, and by definition, the change in energy for the reaction is positive, then this must be an endothermic reaction. All right, so we have the first one was exothermic because delta Q for the reaction was negative. In this case, the reaction, the water lost this much energy, which means the reaction gained this much energy, and a reaction that gains energy is by definition endothermic. Okay, so those are the two types. I hope that was helpful and thank you very much for watching.